recently we saw an instance where the head of the Kenya prisons Mr. Wickliffe Ogalo was removed from his office by a contingent of Kenya policemen police officers in a very dramatic situation I personally did not like that picture there would have been a better way to do it but what led into his being unceremoniously removed some even say that he from there he was placed in cells but that one is unverifiable uh mr wickliffe Og- ogalo was a uh, an administrator uh he took over from mr osugo isaiah osugo isaiah osugo was a long term detective of the cid and then uh, he took over and he became the head of the prisons mr osugo parated at magereza house for quite some time with no incident or no major incident till his retirement but i want to say before i continue that uh, if there is a service a discipline a disciplined service where there is really fights whenever the head is about to retire is the kenya prison so a uh, detective mr isai osugo when he retired he uh, a member of the provincial administration wikili fogalo took over and why was uh, wikili fogalo unceremoniously kicked out it just happened that uh, some prisoners escaped from the maximum security prison they were terrorists and it is a tragic comedy that they had to escape because if you even look at the pictures of the three prisoners they look pathetic uh we may never understand some things for example how they ran how they got out of the maximum security and driven all the way to kambani and dropped there maybe this is what i'm trying to say that uh, in the prison when uh, the, there is uh, usually vicious uh, i uh, fights over heading the prison it is quite possible that somebody wanted weekly for gallo out so that he becomes the head of the prisons i have seen a picture of the two ogalo handing over to arioba brigadier arioba now how he later came to hand over i do not know this is not the first time we are having such a case and i want also to give you another example which happened in the very same same place we used to have the head of prisons in kenya a person called Andrew Sika Saikwa Andrew Sika Saikwa was the head of the prisons in Kenya uh the version that i have had is that one day he started behaving as if his mental capacity was uh, not well promoted all wardens now they is called constables to the rank of corporal and everybody went a rank ahead but others say that he had committed some crime probably the crime of uh, you know you have heading such an organization there is a supply of things something like that so mze jomo kenyata decided that uh, he wanted to do away with andrew sika saikwa he called uh, the provincial police co- provincial police officer of uh, central province mr wambua i cannot recall the second name of mr wambua uh, i called the ppo and told him that you are now you know when you are co- when you are called by the president those days when 
there was no competition. Nowadays, there is uh, some sort of interview, there is some sort of vetting. Those days, you just be called before you go to the president's office. Actually, it is even uh, applicable today because uh, when Brigadier Warioba, when Brigadier retired, Warioba was called to prisons headquarters. In the morning, he didn't even know that he was going to head the prisons. And then uh, instructions were made that uh, a ceremony uniform be made quickly. And when the ceremonial, he, he put on the ceremonial and rushed to the state house and, and was told that you are now the head of prisons. It is still applicable to Kenya prisons. But police and other situations, there is uh, some sort of vetting. So Wambua was called from Nyeri and he was told that he was the new prisons commissioner. So he went to prison headquarters. The prison headquarters then was not very far from where Magereza house is. If you know where uh, Afia house is, uh, there is a, a long gong road. There is a zebra crossing. So if you cross that with that zebra crossing on the other side towards uh, Magereza house, uh, there used to be two wooden houses. <laughs> One of them was uh, two wooden uh, one-floor houses, office blocks. One used to be used by Kenya National Library Services before it went to that roundabout uh, near NHIF. Uh, as I was growing up, that roundabout where there is a national, Kenya National Library Service, it used to be a forest. We used to go there for fair. But uh, we used to go to Kenya National Library just... As you cross the zebra crossing, one side is Afia Center, Afia House, and the other from Afia House you cross the zebra crossing. You enter. Uh, there were two buildings. There, there was the wooden Kenya National Library, and then uh, there was also a prisons headquarters. Where we can call it Magere's House, which was uh, uh, ground floor and first floor. Those who know colonial buildings, you walk as you walk, it makes a lot of noise as you march. So when he went, uh, when Wambua went to prison's headquarters, he found uh, Andrew Sika Saikwa seated in the office, and he to he was wearing the uniform of prison boss, and Saikwa was also wearing prison boss uniform. So he told him, "I'm the new boss, and I have come to take over from you." Saikwa refused and he called in the prison riot squad. They kicked out uh, Mr. Wambua. Mr. Wambua went to the officer's mess, police officer's mess, while dressing in the prison's uniform. And um, he was uh, just uh, stressed. And uh, Stephen Arab Manyinya, the then... Uh, officer in charge of a uh, uh, rec company found him and saluted him you know the day before uh, arab manyinya was one rank below be, be below ambua because head of the rec company is, is uh, below the ppo but um, uh, and also the the, the, the a day after now, Wambua was several ranks ahead of him. So he said, Afande, congratulations. He told him, don't congratulate me because the other fellow may kata talk. Actually, Wambua had gone to State House to tell the president that um, Saikwa had refused to leave the office. And then uh, Jomo Kenyatta told him, you either go back uh, to Kenya prisons and take over, or you go to Machakos. He was a Mukamba. And so he was so st stressed because he was told by Jomo Kenyatta that he cannot go back to Nyeri because another people had taken over. So uh, Arab Manyinya told him, Give me three hours and come to prison headquarters to take over. Arab Manyinya went to the REC company offices took over uni, prison, Kenya prison's uniform, dressed in the red company uh, security men. They went to 
prison headquarters. You know, this fellow had stayed for three days without eating. I mean, we, not without eating, without leaving that place. They used to bring food for him. And those guards who were guarding him had guarded him for three days. So he was tired and those uh, and riot prison officers were also tired. Then the wreck company came. The wreck company came now dressed as prison officers. Uh, they greeted their colleagues. Hey, habari zenyu bwana. Nzuri. Eh. Hawa jinga wanatuletea Kenya police watutawale. Eh. They talked that way and then the wreck company people told people now. Fanyeni hivi endeni nyumbani muoge mchange mulale kujeni after 12 hours tutabadilishana na nyinyi uh, the, the, the guards who, the, the, the riot guards who were at prison headquarters were from kamiti and these ones were from shimolatewa by then naivasha had not yet been built so <laughs> this fellow started uh, uh, the, 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 they started guarding and then uh, a word was sent to Arab Manyinya that uh, it is the uh, REC company that was guarding. Now, REC company was now uniformed as prison officers. And then uh, Nani came, Wambua. As Wambua came, uh, he saw the REC company officers dressed in prison. So he alishtuka kidogo. But then this one saluted him and said, Welcome, Mr. Commissioner. He went to... Then, uh, he was followed closely by Marinya. Marinya said, these are police officers, they are REC company. Then he went and entered again for the second time into uh, Mr. Seikwa's office and told him, sir, I have come to take over from you. Uh, Seikwa called in the, in commerce, uh, the prison guards and said, come and arrest this fellow. Then they asked him to give them a handicap so that he can, they can arrest Wambua. Uh, Mr. Andrew Saikwa gave them handicaps, which they arrested him and placed him in cells. He was taken to committee. And when at committee, he, when it came to time for taking porridge, he found that it had no sugar. He said, hey, you have a was told you are the one who ordered that. And then, um, of course, he was given pr uh, preferences because he they, they, they used to bring him good food. They, they, they are people who used to work under him. So, lastly, I just want to say that um, the system of the government taking people from other disciplined forces to head other disciplined forces should be discouraged. I think when somebody joins as a recruit, in the Kenya prisons, he should go all the way. It is a way of demoralizing people. For the last, uh, I don't know how many heads of Kenya prisons, none of them has been a career prisons officer. Uh, we also had the police, we had uh, a brigadier heading, uh, later he was promoted to major general, but a brigadier went and headed the police force. Uh, let it be that professional people, even if they are direct entry, let professional people be the ones to head those for, uh, security departments. Currently, Kenya prison is headed by a military man. That is bad. That should not be encouraged. What we should encourage is people rising up from the bottom to the top.